We have DA District Attorney um, District Attorney Carl Times, Brooklyn District Attorney Carl Times. We have Ken Thompson. Welcome. Thank you for coming out. Let the audience know the format of the meeting or the forum. And so what we want each candidate to do is uh, come to the mic and um, introduce yourself for a minute each. And we will go to a question period, moderated by our chairwoman, by Mr. Schott, with two questions each candidate. And then we will give you an opportunity at the end of the questions and answers to do a closing. So if we could follow that pretty closely, we would appreciate it. Um, we will be timing. We will be timing. Before. So, we have uh, District Attorney Hines, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> when I had the privilege of becoming District Attorney in 1990, uh, we were in a, a drug related crime wave that was off the chart. We had 158,000 serious felonies. Uh, one out of every 15 of us was the victim of a violent crime. We had 760 murders that year, uh, and uh, it was out of control. My house in Flat, which only a few blocks from here, was burglarized uh, four times in the five years before I ran to DA. Uh, 13 years later, Money Magazine said that we were one of the best places to live in America, one of the 10 best places to live in America. And how did we came from then to now? I'd be more than happy to explore during the question and answer period. Thank you. One minute, huh? Good evening, everyone. My name is Abe George. I'm a lifelong Brooklynite, first generation American. Uh, my parents came to this country. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> My parents came here from India, and they were the first in their family to ever graduate college. My mom had this dream that her children should be raised in Brooklyn so they have better opportunities here in America. Uh, product of the public school system, uh, NYU undergrad, Hofstra Law. I had the privilege of working for Robert Morgenthau, one of the greatest prosecutors in this country in 2004, and I spent eight years there doing narcotics, uh, combating gangs, and working on cold case homicides. <coughs> I resigned last summer because I think there's some issues. As many as uh, the public service that Mr. Hines has given for the last 23 years, I think we could do better. I think that we've got some real issues in Brooklyn that haven't been addressed. The explosion in stop and frisk, the over-prosecution of marijuana cases that have led to minorities getting criminal conviction. What's happened with political corruption? Our DA not zealously going after his friends like Vito Lopez. What's happened in terms of wrongful conviction? Just this weekend, the New York Times said, they had to reinvestigate 50 murder cases. And that's, I think we can do a better, that's a minute? I think we can do a much better job. I'd be happy to take some questions after we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ken Thompson. I am someone who was raised by a single mother right here in New York, who struggled to take care of her three kids. My mother, in 1973, became one of the first women to ever go on, the, go on patrol as a New York City police officer. She spent 21 years of her, of her life for the people of New York and to provide for me and my brother and sister. My mother gave me a courageous example that I've lived with, and she's taught me to stand up for victims. I went on to John Jay College, NYU Law School, worked for President Clinton in the Treasury Department, came back home, joined the U.S. Attorney's Office, and stood up for justice. I'm the one who prosecuted that case on behalf of Abner Lewin. When Abner Lewin was tortured in, in that bathroom in the 70 precinct, I did the opening statement and convicted Justin Bowman. I will stand up for you. I have stood up for victim after victim, and I will represent you with distinction in Brooklyn DA. Thank you. Hines, what new programs would you put in place to reduce the recidivism rates 
in communities of color. And that's for everybody. This is a general question for everybody. Well, I have a continue and expand two programs. You know, in, in 1990, uh, realizing that we were uh, throwing away people uh, whose only only uh, crime was to be a victim of drug addiction, I started the first residential drug treatment program anywhere in the United States. Columbia University uh, validated that program with a five-year study found that uh, during that five-year period, we reduced the reoffending rate by more than half, and 63% of our graduates never were rearrested again, and 91% were employed. I also began a program 16 years ago, the first in the, the country, for the reentry of formerly incarcerated. Six out of ten people nationally are rearrested within three years of release. When I started the, the reentry re program, that was validated by Harvard University in a 22-month study, and they found that we reduced again the recidivism rates by more than half, and that uh, two out of ten instead of six out of ten are uh, rearrested within three years. What I will do with my next term, if I'm given the privilege of being reelected, is I will expand both those programs and some 28 other programs which have been designed to reduce recidivism rate. And I have to tell you, the disproportionate effect those two programs have a positive weight on people of color in this county, particularly African the merit. I think those programs are great, but that was over a decade ago. Uh, we had the Red Hook Community Center, and just recently, only recently, do we have the Brownsville Community Center. We need to look at the areas where we have huge crime problems, East New York, Brownsville, Bedstock, and start to expand our community centers in those neighborhoods. Uh, I think we've got to do a better job at targeting youth. In my experience, the big problem we have are 16, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds that get caught up in the criminal justice system. How do we figure that out? Well, it's a simple matter of gathering intelligence. Find out who the youth are in family courts. Find out who the youth are that are in public schools that are having problems. Figure out who those people are and stop them before they get into the criminal justice system. Let's face it, it's too late when kids come to us in the criminal justice system when they're sitting across from us with a table. We've got to stop it before it starts, and that's among some of the other programs and ideas that I have. I mean, I think that we need to be better at gathering intelligence. There's a huge intelligence failure right here in Brooklyn. There are different parts of the police department that don't talk to each other. Sometimes you have uniformed police officers that work in a certain area in the detective squad who aren't sharing intel. I think the DA's office should be on the forefront of that. Getting that intel, working with narcotics, working with the gang, working with the community, getting that intelligence and working in a proactive way. I think it's not about stopping everyone. It's about stopping the right people. And as DA, I would take those steps forward to bring down crime. What I would do day one is focus on saving our children, preventing our children, young people, from coming into the criminal justice system in the first place. The question is about recidivism. I want to focus on stopping people from coming into the system from the get-go. I know growing up in this city, the friends I've lost to violence, where they had one thing in common on crime was that they didn't say in school. Imagine if we put more money into our schools. The DA can no longer just be the gatekeeper of the criminal justice system. The DA must be a leader. In Cincinnati, that city is, is, is developing and enhancing a, a concept called community schools, where they're keeping schools open to 8 o'clock at night, where kids are learning computers, language, playing basketball. When I came up, we had midnight basketball. I think the DA needs to find money and invest it in our schools to help these kids from the very beginning. You can have 30 programs once they come in the system, but they're going to leave the system with a misdemeanor or a felony. I want to save lives. That's why I'm going to for Brooklyn. Thank you. And now we'll let
uh, parents that need to be informed with other issues that pertain to our school. So we need to start in education from babies. We cannot have five years old or seven year old child being hang up in Queens that happened just two months ago and you have 25 police cars going for a seven year old boy. How do we handle that situation? Um, she, she, her question was, how do you stop, um, I guess, at an early age from juveniles, from getting prosecuted? I just want to point out uh, that the 30 programs that we started since 1990, they're all about prevention before you go into the system. And one of the programs I'm most proud of it's something I started in 1990. It's called Project Legal Lives. And it was born out of my experience in the Howard Beach case when I put three white races behind prison walls for many, many years as the chief prosecutor. Project Legal Lives does two things. We send assistant district attorneys and, and support staff into the uh, public schools, the private schools, the parochial schools of this county. We've been doing that since 1990, uh, 10 hours a month, teaching two moral values that it is wrong to hate anyone, regardless of what the, the difference might be, and that drugs are about death, not about fast cars and gold jewelry. That's what I've done. We have brought that program to tens of thousands of kids in Brooklyn. That's real prevention. Once again, that was 20 years ago. What are we going to do? Once again, that's a current What are we going to do for the next four years? And the question is, which, which one of these candidates here today is going to take us into the next century? I mean, folks, that program is a 20-year-old program. We need someone with the vision that understands what the nature of Brooklyn's like. I think the question really was, hey, why is it that we're cuffing a five-year-old child to a bench? Right? Am I right, man? Okay. Let me tell you, that's unacceptable. Unacceptable. And I think we've had a DA for too long that has stood by and let the police do what they want. Think about it. Stop and frisk and marijuana is a problem. And Mr. Hines has said this time and time again. I can't tell a 23-year-old rookie cop to do. That's the police commissioner's job. Let me tell you something. If you as the chief law enforcement officer of this county can't tell the police what they're doing is right or wrong, then you don't deserve this job anymore. Well, I think that the DA should be fighting for people and telling the police when they've stepped over the line. Think about our marijuana laws. And we've spent over $100 million prosecuting people on marijuana. And who's been the disproportionate impact of that? Communities like this. African Americans, Hispanics. I mean, if you look at the crime stats, you think the only people that smoke marijuana are minorities. That's ridiculous. We need a DA that's going to stand up and fight for the people. I'll tell you day one, I'm not going to wait for the state senate to act. I'm going to decriminalize marijuana as DA. If you have a small amount of marijuana, it's in plain view in your pocket, it should be treated like a traffic ticket. So the bottom line, ma'am, to answer your question is we need a DA that's willing to tell the police when they're wrong. And I'm that guy. What I want to say is essentially this. This concept of school to prison pipeline is real. When I was coming up, I came up through the public school system. We did all types of things. I went to Norman Thomas High School. That now what those kids do, they end up in handcuffs. And I believe that we have to have a different approach. But it's not just about standing up here and, and getting all excited and saying that you're going to tell the cops this. The DA has to work with the police. I intend to work with the police, but I intend to respect the community. I intend to make, I intend to make sure that our community is treated fairly, all communities. Look. Stop and frisk is a real problem, as A. George mentioned. We have to do something about it. We can no longer have hundreds of thousands of young black men who have done nothing wrong stopped on the streets and frisk. We can't do that. And brought into the system and then being prosecuted because we're wiping out generations of young men. They will not be able to get jobs. They will not be able to get into college. They will not be able to take, them, take, take care of themselves or a family. So we are inadvertently putting them on the path of criminal activity there were collateral consequences to remaining silent. And I assure you that I will not sit at my desk and shrug my shoulders at so many young people coming into the criminal justice system. 
I want to focus on those who belong in the system. I want to make sure that there are no wrongful uh, convictions. I just wrote a letter to the governor yesterday asking him to appoint a special prosecutor or the AG to investigate the 50 cases that are now going to be investigated. They want to throw this detective under the bus. But that detective didn't work alone. That detective worked with prosecutors under Mr. Hines. We need an independent, fair prosecutor here. And I am telling you, I have fought for Admiral Louima, I fought for Emmett Till, I fought for Naffy Diallo, the hotel housekeeper, in the Dominique Strauss Khan case. When everyone abandoned her, I stayed with her to the very end because I believe that she was attacked in that room. I fought for her like I'll fight for you as Brooklyn DA. Thank you very much. Thank you. We can ask a few more because we have many other um, candidates who are, are here who are waiting to speak. Uh, I'd just like to take this time um, to give each and every one of you 30 seconds closing. We're going to time it. And um, feel free to uh, leave your materials here so that everybody can read your materials. Okay, District Attorney Hines, please. Those of you who know me know that my uh, career has been based on trying to keep people out of prison, not putting people in prison. The easiest thing I do is put people in prison. The most important thing I've done is create programs that prevent people from going to prison in the first place. And don't listen to the pandering, please. Ask yourself if either one of these guys has ever been anything more than a line assistant. They've not managed anything. You really want someone to manage a $60 million budget with 1,400 employees as their first managerial job? It's a bad idea. like the way things are going, wrongful conviction, stop and frisk, the over-prosecution of marijuana cases, this is your man. If you want to change the direction for the next four years for, for Brooklyn to take a different turn, you got to look to one of our, our candidates, Ken Thompson or I. But the question is, who's going to be the real progressive in this race? Who's going to take the office to reflect the views of the community? He didn't address stop and frisk. He didn't talk about marijuana. And I'll tell you, if you look at position for position, who's got the vision to take the office in the direction? I'm that candidate. Folks, we need to change the system as it's working now. It, we need to change this and modernize the office. I believe in an intelligence-based prosecution where we gather evidence, and the DA is at the forefront of figuring out how to stop violent crime. Listen, folks, when Mr. Hines was running for district attorney, Ronald Reagan was president, the Cold War was ending, and we didn't have the internet. Brooklyn has changed, and now Brooklyn needs a new, a new DA. I'm Abe George, running for Brooklyn DA. I would just say this. I was just, you were just told that I have never run a, a budget of 60 million and 1,400 employees. Let me tell you, when I was in the third grade, if my mother would have went to my third grade teacher and said, you see my little son there? One day he's going to graduate college with honors. He's going to graduate NYU Law School. He's going to write a, help write a report for a sitting president. He's going to become a federal prosecutor. He's going to start his own law firm from scratch and have it on Fifth Avenue and have 15 people working for him. And he's going to stand up for victim after victim. He's going to be a great father, a great husband. He's going to do all he can. They would have told my mother that she should be evaluated. But my mother put her life on the line for her children. As a single mother, she put values in me. And you know what? I think coming from the Wagner Projects to living with what I have now, I built with it with my hands. And if I become Brooklyn DA, I will give you the best DA's office in the country. He didn't, he didn't supervise 1,400 people before he became DA. So look at my life. No one gave me anything. I fought to get here. I fought for the rights of people. Abner Luima, Nancy Diallo, Ramona Moore, Emmett Till. And I'll fight for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank all of our candidates uh, for coming out tonight. Thank you so much for taking some time to address the public. Um, and again, um, we have uh, for our feedbacks. Everybody's going to fill out. So thank you so much and have a safe trip. Thank you. Thank you.